on Sunday, March 29th, we held a communion service via Zoom. A hundred persons logged in, possibly about 150 people were watching, but we weren't able to record it because we hadn't quite mastered the technology. But I want to record now the homily that we gave on that Sunday so that some of you who were not able to join us could perhaps find this encouraging. First, though, we hear our reading from John's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and Martha, her sister. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. I know, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. 
Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. On this Passion Tide Sunday, we hear this most extraordinary account of the raising of Lazarus. The story is so vivid and holds nothing back regarding the pain and grief of Lazarus' family and Jesus' own grief at the death of his friend. However, this remarkable event, the sorrow is transformed by Lazarus being raised from the dead. That would have produced incredible shock and amazement by all who were there. And it also caused many of the Jews who saw it to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. As we near Holy Week and remember the suffering of Jesus on the cross, we as a people are under a shadow of suffering caused by this pandemic of the coronavirus. We are in a time of distress. It is a most difficult time indeed. And for our nation, most likely the worst is still to come. But this story we have heard keeps hope alive. And where hope is, faith and love endure. We have hope because we are assured that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In the face of death, in the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus promises hope. In the pain and grief of his friends, Martha and Mary, Jesus comes alongside. He comes to them. He is with them. In this challenging time we face, we wish it was different. There is stress and a million questions about what is happening and why. But like in this story, Jesus comes to us and is with us. His presence gives us strength, strength to endure, and a, a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of light in the distance. And his presence will transform our darkness. As he transformed Lazarus' death, so he will redeem our suffering. We wait and see what good will come out when this virus passes, and it will pass. How will you and I be different Different people because we endured and kept faith. This hope of redemption and transformation, it's not a promise that everything will be all right. After all, Lazarus did eventually die a permanent death. But that by having faith and hope, by looking to God and trusting, we can carry on and find ways to deal with all that life throws at us, however awful, However painful, he is with us. Let us look to him. He is closer than our breath. In this holy communion service, we remember both his suffering on the cross and his resurrection to new life, and so we give thanks. Though the shadows hang low and we wonder when it will all end, we keep faith, we keep hope. We look to God and pray, or let others pray for us. We look to each other, even though separated, by telephone, waves and smiles at a distance, by Skype or Zoom or whatever. We share together and we encourage one another. By asking each other, is there anything I can do for you? We care for each other. And in all of this, may we have eyes of faith to see that he is with us. He shows us his love and how we care for one another. His presence with us keeps faith and hope alive. Amen. The Lord be with you.